Good morning, welcome to another vlog. I just showered and uh, I was about to do my skincare routine and so many of you ask me about my skincare routine, morning and evening, just what I do and thank you, <laughs> thank you by the way. There is no bigger compliment uh, than that so I really appreciate it, thank you so much. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to kind of go through that, uh, my morning, and then this evening I'll do my evening skincare with you guys as well. I am working with Retrouvé on this uh, video, and Retrouvé is a brand that I absolutely love, that I have talked about on my channel endlessly. I have the utmost respect for Retrouvé as well. Uh, their skincare company that was started by the same family that uh, created Kiehl's. So they have a ton of experience formulating skincare, and their Retrouvé line is so unique. It's so simple. It's so effective. It is really, really, probably the most special skincare line that I have come across. Um, it is designed to be unisex, so you'll notice that the packaging is very unisex. Let me just show you the first product that I'm gonna be using. This is the Skin Brilliance Pads, and you can tell by the packaging that it's truly meant to be unisex. So these Skin Brilliance Pads are like an exfoliating um, pad, and so if you open it up, you'll see a whole stack of pads in there. I just took one out. <laughs> and the acid that they use in here, it's an AHA, and like I've always told you, I have very uh, dry, sensitive skin. It is eczema prone, so I have always stayed away from AHAs, BHAs, glycolic, salicylic, like all these acids that really um, disturb the skin barrier. But this is one of, or maybe the only one, <laughs> the only product with an AHA in there that I can use. And I do focus it on uh, the parts of my skin where I feel like they're more resilient. Like I do have very sensitive uh, parts of my skin like around my eyes and around my mouth so I do stay away from there but I do put this like over here on my jawline I think you guys have heard me talk about how I have like texture there um, so I use the pad just lightly I just sort of glide it over those areas I bring it up maybe to like my cheekbones but again I stay away from my eye area so if you have sensitive skin you know you know <laughs> where your skin is the most sensitive and then between my eyebrows I definitely have a bit of texture I'll bring it there and then just lightly glide it over my forehead. Anything left over that I have, I actually put it on my hands. My hands tend to be very, very dry. I work with my hands a lot. I'm not good about moisturizing all the time or wearing gloves when I do dishes or whatever. So I do like to use a bit on my hands as well. Kind of keeps them soft and supple. But the AHAs in here, and I'm just looking at their website because I don't want to get this wrong. Um, the AHAs are from naturally occurring botanical fruit acids. So maybe that's why this product is very gentle but very, very effective and works for my sensitive skin. So this is something I like to use after I cleanse my skin in the mornings. And then Retrouvé has like a whole line of moisturizers and their naming is a little bit unique, much like their skincare lines. So they have a nutrient face serum, and this is actually what you could consider like their lightest moisturizer, if you will. And then they have the Dynamic Nourishing Face Cream, and I would say this is their mid-weight moisturizer. And then they have the Intensive Replenishing Facial Moisturizer, and this is very intense. This is, I would say, for the driest of skin out there. So I like to use this in the evenings. So I'll go between the serum and the cream uh, during the day, and it really just depends on how my skin is feeling. So uh, serum, if my skin is feeling pretty good, pretty <laughs> well balanced, the cream if it's feeling on the drier side. Sometimes I do go with the um, moisturizer, which, like I said, I like to use at night, but this is definitely uh, the thickest and yeah, I, I have to be feeling like really really dry if I want to use that during the day But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and use the cream today because I am feeling a little bit dry The weather here is changing. It is definitely uh, Getting drier and it's definitely more crisp in the evenings and the mornings So my skin is definitely feeling it because during the day the AC is still going so yeah My skin is kind of feeling the effects of the seasonal change. So I'm gonna go with the face cream So here's the texture of the face cream typical, like a really thick, rich kind of cream. And I'm just gonna go ahead and work that in. So since I use a different eye product from them, I just put the cream like on my forehead and then like up to my cheeks and just around my 
mouth and everything. And then next, I'd like to go in with their Revitalizing Eye Concentrate. This actually has a very similar texture to the Intensive Moisturizer. So let me just show this to you. It is waterless. And so you could almost consider this like a concentrate. That's all I need for my eye area. And that's actually plenty, especially for the daytime. Um, I'll maybe put a little bit more on in the evening, uh, but this is plenty for the day. So I just like to apply to the eye area bring out to my temples and it just glides on and there's really no better word although it's not very complimentary but there's really no better word for this eye concentrate than calling it goopy it's very very goopy um, it does eventually you know obviously get absorbed by your skin and it really really is moisturizing if you have dry tired skin around your eyes like my skin around my eyes is so tired i think it's just from us looking at screens all day this is the remedy for that it is so so soothing it is so soothing so nourishing and it's just this like a big burst of hydration which is what i've been feeling like my eye area has really been needing so that's the eye concentrate and before that i used the face cream and that is it for my morning skincare routine when i use my retrovay products i don't feel like i need to go in with like a separate serum and a separate oil all of their products are so multi-dimensional that you can really pare down your skincare routine but you feel like you did <laughs> your like nine steps or whatever. Oh, but the last thing I do use, this is actually for my face, it's their Dermal Defense Hand Cream. And this is something, like I just said, I'm not the best at keeping my hands moisturized. The only time I'm sure to do it is in the mornings. So I'd like to make sure I do this now because who knows for the rest of the day. And, and this hand cream is really transformative. And the, the texture of this hand lotion is really great. It's very, very silky smooth. It absorbs fairly quickly. And I really, I'm someone that really does not like the feeling of lotion on their hands. That's probably why I don't put it on all day. But I do really, really love this one. I absolutely encourage you to go onto the Retrovase site. They have this great page called Our Story where they talk about their history and how, you know, everything kind of evolved into this Retrovase skincare line. And you can even book a consult on their site, which I highly, highly recommend because their products are fairly unique, you know, compared to a lot of other skincare lines that have you know, like uh, the typical toner, lotion, serum, oil, moisturizer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they've really pared down their line because like I said, all of their products really are not only multi-dimensional, but multi-purpose. And so you just don't need like all of those steps when you use Retrovay. So that has been my morning skincare routine lately. Um, and like I said, I will come back in the evening and share with you the Retrovay products that I use in the evening time. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get ready for the rest of the day. I have to do quite a bit of filming. I have been incredibly busy uh, launching my new blog and packing, <laughs> packing up a lot of boxes. Thank you guys so, so much for all of the orders that you placed for my sweatshirts, for my neckwear, all of my scarves and things, my jewelry. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. So anyway, let me get dressed and get to work. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in a bit. I was just walking into my office to uh, sit down and, whoa, <laughs> some strong sunlight here, uh, to sit down and film. And I made like some very minor changes <laughs> to my office that I wanted to share with you. So over that big arch window, I just hung this really gauzy uh, drape. Basically, I had a table here that I actually had to move out into my entryway because I was using that to pack and ship <laughs> boxes. All of your sweatshirts and everything, I had to use that table. Uh, so that is uh, normally what's gonna be sitting there. It's just this kind of like uh, counter height table. Um, and so I wanted to start like filming there a little bit more or it's just a good place for me to sit down and uh, film like a little bit more casually than, you know, in my closet studio room so um i needed something in front of the window because the light that comes through as you can see it's really strong and i need something to not block it completely but soften it so i had someone come over and help me hang this and we just couldn't figure out where to put it because if we put it right above the arch then this still did not reach the floor and so it just looked like i don't know like it was wearing i don't know like 
high waters or something. Um, and so I thought, let's just put it all the way up to the ceiling. And then with the table in front of there, you kind of won't even notice where it ends because it kind of ends right behind the table. And this way it just kind of keeps everything looking really tall in here. I don't know. <laughs> this is a temporary solution anyway. I just got these panels and that uh, rod off of Amazon. Uh, so yeah, it's just a temporary kind of solution uh, just to kind of soften up the sunlight. So that is one change. And then another minor change is that I ordered more of those Ikea Alex drawers. And I hate these drawers. <laughs> I really hate these drawers. I did not want to buy any more. I've been just working with what I have. But my, my makeup organization is so out of control. It's none of it's organized at this point. And I just, I don't have a good grip on it. I can never find what I have. So I ended up getting two more of these nine drawers. These are still, they're completely empty because I do want to film a declutter and then an organization video. But like, I just have, I just have makeup everywhere. I mean, you guys have seen this a thousand times, but it's just everywhere in this room. It's making me nuts. I haven't even shown you out here where I still have like PR sitting on the floor and I have like makeup up there. It's just a mess. And I think I've just been in denial and I've just been wanting to do more of like a permanent solution in there, maybe get California closets in there to build me like a wall of drawers that, um, you know, that we can measure out for like my tallest foundation bottle, things like that. I haven't had time to even think about it. So I'm like, let me just get some drawers, at least get myself organized and then we can go from there. So that's it. Those are the two like minor improvements I've made to this room. Hey guys, I just finished filming and I love the way my makeup looks and it's such a not me kind of makeup look because it's it's like a pink eyeshadow i'm basically using the miss dior quint i have a clay de poe lipstick shine in influential i can't remember the number it's like 211 or something um i have i have like a whole bunch of powders on my cheeks some from the hourglass elephant palette two different luminizing face enhancers from clay de poe so i've got a lot of like shine going on but I just, yeah, I just love the way like my makeup looks today. It's so strange because again, this is not really like, uh, like a color theme that I go with a lot, but I'm really liking this like pink, this pretty and pink thing. All right, we're making a quick stop at the post office. I was just grabbing some lunch and packing up those boxes and I thought, why don't I just go and drop them off now while I'm taking a little bit of a break. And I usually drop off my boxes at the UPS store because it's right in my neighborhood. Um, but the UPS, no, the, <laughs> the USPS driver has been coming early and I think I missed him for today. So I'm gonna drive a bit a ways to the post office, the actual post office, and drop off these boxes because they're all uh, USPS. The reason why I usually go to the UPS store is because, well, one, it's closer, but I usually have like a mixture of boxes, USPS and UPS, and um, they take both. Um, the UPS store, I can drop everything off there. So it makes more sense when I have a mixture. But anyway, going to the post office, my... <laughs> My back is really hurting from packing and shipping. I was like, wow, I am just getting too old for this. And I remember when I first launched the MW Wraps, I remember my back hurting uh, when I was doing that. So I'm not really surprised, but every time it happens, I'm like, oh man, there's like nothing <laughs> that makes you feel, I think, older than than like a sore back. But I packed up and shipped more than 300 boxes, so I'm actually surprised like my feet didn't hurt more at the end of the day because I was on my feet the whole the whole day, just like picking and then actually getting the boxes and then carrying them out to my car. And, and I just have my Birkenstocks on. I wonder if that's really helpful. I don't know. I remember, I don't know. I usually have my um, UGG slippers on. Um, but for some reason I just had my Birkenstocks on and I just kept them on and they're not especially like cushiony at all But maybe just that like form fitted cork sole is more supportive in some way I don't know, but I kind of have a newfound respect for these Birks because You know, I love them because they're just easy shoes and you know, you just slip them on But I never really thought of them as like shoes I could stand in all day Like dance goes Okay, I just <coughs> Wow, excuse me I just dropped off the boxes at the post office and I'm close to a Starbucks. I don't usually get Starbucks. It's just not something I'm in the habit of doing. I don't like making iced coffee at home. It never comes out 
quite right. Um, and so I think I'm going to get an iced decaf. And I started drinking decaf in the afternoons because I just don't want anything interrupting my sleep. And I don't usually have an issue with caffeine um, and, and sleepy time, but occasionally I'll have problems sleeping through the night. And the last thing I need is like anything kind of feeding into that. Okay, I'm getting an iced cafe Americano grande, <laughs> a decaf, um, with a splash of 2% milk, pumpkin spice topping, and I'm gonna try the pumpkin cream cold foam. What's that? I'm gonna try that. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, off to Starbucks. Yeah, let me know when you're ready. I just got a drink. Was it just the grande? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Too much oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Have a good one. She was handing me some delicious treat. One of those uh, lemon loaves, or maybe it was like a pumpkin loaf. I don't know. I was like, that's not for me. <laughs> Here's that pumpkin foam. Mmm. It's a bit sweet. It's a bit sweet. I'm not really the biggest fan of super sweet coffee, as you guys know. Um, but that's a nice little treat a little treaty so i just got butters this new toy i'm spoiling her a bit because we had a little bit of an incident and i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't actually sure if i was ready to talk about it but i'm like if you guys see her in the vlog even in the background you may wonder uh what's going on because she has this i don't know if you can see it this like shaved patch over here um and her eyes are not just bloodshot but she has like broken blood vessels in her eyes. So anyway, I thought I would just um, talk about what happened very quickly. You like your new piglet? I got this at Target, by the way. <laughs> we're just calling it Little Piglet. So a few nights ago, we were walking butters in our neighborhood on our evening walk. It was around seven. And it was just, it's just really dark in our neighborhood when the sun goes down. Uh, we have some street lamps, but they're really far apart and they're pretty dim and most of them are camouflaged by trees. Anyway, um, just out of nowhere and completely silently, this um, very large, and it was dark so I'm not positive, but it looked like a Rottweiler, came and attacked Butters. And he basically clamped down onto the left side of her, actually the opposite side of her, but the left side of her and just didn't just didn't let go and my husband and I we basically did all the things you're not supposed to do we were screaming I was hysterical um and just trying to pry the dog's uh, mouth open it's not gonna happen this is like an 80 90 pound rottweiler um and so I was screaming you know help and whose dog is this and blah 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 and finally um his owners came out and kind of took control of him but you know, he didn't have a collar or a leash on. So I think he got out of the house basically. And so the owners were just sort of like on him. And so we just wanted to get her out of there and back home and like examine her or whatever. Um, so we just picked her up and like walked back home. But anyway, she's actually fine. And I, I, I was at the point, like it felt like we were trying to get him off of her for so long that I couldn't look because I was like, oh my God, I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen, but um, I think what saved her was her harness. Um, so I, I heard the guy, cause it, it all happened so quickly, but I heard the owner of the dog was like getting his dog off of her. And I think, I think I heard him say like, oh, his teeth are caught on the harness. His teeth are caught on the harness. So we were like prying the harness off. And I think that's what saved her. So she definitely, um, like that side of her is really tender. Um, she winces a little bit, you know, she kind of does this. She shakes a lot or whatever, and there was no blood or anything. And actually what happened on this side um, was her harness, I think, uh, it's like an abrasion. So I think it was like the other side of her harness, since the dog was like pulling from the other side, that was like rubbing her because there was some fur missing. And then the vet like shaved that area just to kind of get a good look at what was going on. And so it was like just all red or whatever. So um, she has these broken blood vessels in her eyes. And I asked the vet about that. I was, I was like, he, you know, he wasn't on her head or anything. He was down here. And she's like, it's just from the trauma. Um, either her like reacting really quickly. Um, he said, did, did he like, you know how dogs can um, like shake? Um, he's, you know, my vet asked if 
the dog like kind of like shook her and I'm like, I honestly don't remember. I was like, you know, maybe, probably. So anyway, so she has a little bit of trauma, but she's actually like really fine. You can see she wants to play and everything. And yeah, I was just devastated. I was really, really uh, devastated and I haven't really slept well since that night. And yeah, it's just, it's not something I wish on my worst enemy. You know, it is uh, really awful. And I'm just so thankful that she's, fine. I mean, we were like, you know, we got her home and we could see her eyes. Um, her left eye was, it was very obvious. Her right eye, that actually didn't appear until the next morning. Anyway, um, we're just so thankful that she's okay. And, and that there was really like no serious injury. And I do think most of it is because of the harness. I think, um, she's also really muscly <laughs> for like a small dog. She's like really kind of chesty and muscly. And I think, Maybe that helps a little bit because she does have like quite a bit of meat, like right where he chomped down. So um, she has a little bit of like protection from her organs there because she has a lot of like muscle right there. So yeah, I'm talking about you. How cute are you? Hmm? How cute are you? But she is on pain medication. She's on anti-inflammatories. We have an ointment for that one um, abrasion spot and we have eye drops for her. And, and that's it. The vet didn't see any scratches in her eyes, so it's not that. That's it, I just wanted to just update you guys on that and let you know what happened, especially because you know if you see her in the background. Everyone here loves you, so I just wanted to let everyone know. You're being so quiet and still, are you okay? She's just like looking at me. You're so funny. But anyway, we, you know, we're, we're taking care of the situation. My husband is talking to the HOA about it and you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. It's not like I want, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want the dog to be uh, reprimanded. I don't want anything to happen to the dog because it's not the dog's fault. Absolutely not the dog's fault. If anything, maybe the owner, <laughs> I don't know, can get fined or something. I, I don't know. I don't know how they handle it or if they just kind of like keep a file on, on hand of troubled dogs. I, I, don't, I really don't know, but we just felt it was important to at least let our HOA know because, you know, God forbid she was, what if we like had like a little kid, you know, walking around, this dog came around or an even smaller dog, which would have been a one bite snack for this dog. This dog was huge. <laughs> this dog was really, really huge. So anyway, just a quick update on Butters. We're so happy you're okay, right baby? Oh yeah, there you are, there you are. I thought she was being maybe a little camera shy for you guys, but so yeah, I'm gonna be spoiling her quite a bit. Oh, and do you know what was here waiting for me when I came home from my Starbucks run <laughs> at the post office was, and I just unboxed it because I wasn't sure what it was. It didn't have like the name on the box, is the Diptyque advent calendar. I'm so excited. It's the exact same size as last year's and it's the exact same layout. I don't know if you guys remember it, but you know, you open it up and then like the two like halves open up and then there's another layer underneath. So excited here. Let me turn you around. So here it is. Obviously it's a different color than last year's. Last year's was, was that white with the swirl. Um, so this, yeah, some info on what's included. And then like I was saying, like these two halves open up and then there's more boxes on the side. <gasps> So exciting, so exciting. I'm, I'm not gonna spoil the surprise, uh, so I'm not gonna open anything, but I really, really want to. And it smells amazing. This is just, uh, this is so, so cool. I'm so excited for 25. Look how big that box is. Should we open one? Oh my God, I'm like such a child. Should we open one? There's one right there. Should we take a look? Let's take a look. Okay, let's just do one. Let's just do one. Okay, so here's the box. And then, oh, I know exactly what this is because the wax color is very unique. It's like a grayish color. This is the photo bois. This is that wood smoke. What's up, baby? You wanna play with Piggy? Just one second, baby. Um, this is their photo bois scent. I love this. This is like in my top five of diptyque scents, because it's wood smoke and it's just perfect, perfect for the holidays. Okay, I put that away. We're gonna pretend we didn't do that. We're gonna act all surprised on December 1st when we open that. Good morning. I, 
woke up a little bit late. Um, I am on my way to Pilates and I have to leave my house, I would say by like 6.35 to make my seven o'clock. And it's about 6.40 right now. So I'm gonna be late. Anyway, how are you guys doing? I forgot to show you my evening skincare routine last night because I was exhausted, exhausted. I haven't been sleeping well. I've been just really busy. I've been really stressed, everything. And I just, I like was doing it and I'm like, oh my God, I'm not vlogging. <laughs> so we'll do that tonight for sure. And I don't know if you can see, but it's so brisk out that I have to wear my little windbreaker, my little camo windbreaker. So exciting. I was like 60 degrees. Actually, my car says it's 59. 59 degrees. I was like, excuse me. So today I have, you know, kind of a typical day of filming ahead of me, filming and editing ahead of me. I do have to go to the strip. So uh, my very best friend, my oldest friend, uh, the one that came to visit me, back in August, she is turning 50 and I have to get her a gift. I was thinking about um, like an Hermes bangle or something. I was thinking about getting us like the same one, kind of like besties, like jewelry of some sort. So I was gonna go to Hermes. It's just, she, um, she doesn't buy stuff like that for herself. So I just want to spoil her a little bit. So that, that was my thought, but um, I was gonna go to the Wynn because I want to stop by the Diptyque Boutique and also get some of their seasonal candles. Did you see, did you see their holiday candles? There is one that has my name written all over it. It's actually, I can't remember the name of it, um, but it actually reminds me of one that I loved from Sierra Trudon last year. It's like a, kind of like a smoky, but cocoa kind of scent. Oh my gosh, I, I'm like dying, dying to go and like, experience it in person. So that's what we're gonna do later today. Pilates first, a little bit of work first, and yeah, and then I will take us to the strip. Hey guys, we are on our way to the strip. We are making a little pit stop at the UPS store because I got some more orders in. Thank you guys again so much for your support on the launch and the sweatshirts and everything. It means everything to me. Thank you so much. Yeah, and then we're gonna head off to the strip. My husband is actually coming with me. Um, and then we're gonna hit Resorts World and check out their food court for lunch. I'm so excited. shopping trip. All right, we are at resorts now. We're gonna go grab some food. Um, we were trying to find the self-parking, but it seems like it's in a completely different location. So anyway, we just valeted. If any of you guys come to Vegas and visit <laughs> resorts, I don't suggest the self-parking, unless you're just gonna leave your car there. Anyway, let's see what kind of food they have at the food court.
guys, it's actually been uh, several hours since I vlogged while we were on the strip. We had such a delicious lunch at resorts. They just have the most interesting food court. It is not your typical food court. If you're ever in Vegas, definitely check it out. They had all of these like different Asian cuisines. They had like barbecue. They had like a little burger joint. Um, anyway, it was a lot of fun. Um, and then I came home, I had to like work. I filmed, <laughs> as you can see, edited a whole bunch of things. Anyway, I just finished eating dinner and um, I wanted to show you what I ended up getting at Diptyque and Hermes. So let's open up Diptyque first, because this will be quick. I mean, the Hermes will be quick too, but let's take a look at this. I mean, look at this beautiful bag and this ribbon. Isn't that so nice? I just love everything about Diptyque. So they have three holiday candles and I got two of one and one of the other and uh, one I didn't purchase at all. So the one that I didn't purchase at all is the Neige and that had um, just a really light uh, kind of I don't know, like floral musky kind of fragrance and it just didn't seem very like holiday it was very winter but it did seem very holiday to me so i just kind of passed on that one so i got one of the sapin which is uh like their pine tree one and this one is so like fresh it's not a very heavy uh like woodsy kind of pine tree one yeah it's a very very clean clean pine tree fragrance so the lids on their holiday candles have a gold finish to them. And wait, did I even show you the box? Here is the box. So beautiful. And then here is the vessel. And the wax is green. And all the white on the vessel is actually glow in the dark. Oh, should we try it? Hold on, let's see. No, darn it. I was like turning off all the lights or whatever. It, I just, the camera couldn't pick it up. Anyway, it's like a slight glow in the dark. So, so cool. But the fragrance, yeah, it's real like just fresh pine, almost like a young pine tree. Oh, I love it so much. So I got one of those. And then the one I was like really most excited for is this one, which is... I don't know if I can pronounce it. Actually, I'm not even sure what it's called. Etcincel? Etcincel? E-T-C-I-N-E-L-L-E-S. Um, but this one has like this wonderful cocoa fragrance to it. And I think I was talking about this. It kind of reminds me of a Sierra Trudon holiday candle that came out last year. I can't remember the name. But I got, I think I got two of those as well. So I did pick up two of these box packaging looks like. It has the same gold lid. Oh, I can smell it already. Oh, and it has like a maroon kind of brownish colored wax. And I love this like very subdued kind of holiday color story that they have going on. The Neige candle was this, um, not a cobalt blue, but also not a navy blue, kind of in between. And so it's just this really kind of like almost like desaturated, subtle color story that they have for holiday. And they just, you know, throw in all the sparkle and the festive qualities uh, with all of the stars and stuff. So it's really, really nice. I think this looks a lot more elegant than if they were to use like, you know, red or something. So this is like a mixture of wood smoke and cocoa. Oh my God, I got two. I feel like I should get more. <laughs> I want a cologne of this, wood smoke and cocoa. Okay. Sorry, let me put that away. But that's what I picked up at uh, Diptyque, those three candles. I'm thinking about the Neige candle, just, you know, to kind of complete the set, but I just didn't like it nearly as much as I liked these two. I mean, I liked it, but I didn't like it for holiday or the winter time quite as much as I liked these two. So uh, anyway, I'll keep thinking on it. Um, and when I was at the store, they gave me a notebook. Isn't that cool? And then they gave me some matches. So I thought that was really neat. Here's the Dip Deep logo. And these are those really long matches, which is great. So that's my Dip Deep haul. And then, ta-da, what I got at Hermes. So I think I told you guys, I was going um, to find something for my friend uh, because she's turning 50 this year. So I wanted to get 
like an Hermes bangle for her and I wanted to get one either the same or kind of similar so that we had something together. I did find something. They didn't actually have a lot of options for pattern ones because I didn't want to get her a solid one. My friend really likes, you know, color and patterns and things. And so I wanted something that would obviously go with her wardrobe and her look. So I picked up one of the click clack bangle bracelets, which you guys know I love. I already have three. So this one, isn't this cute? So it has like wild cats on there. You guys know how much I love animal prints. So we have like a cheetah print there. Isn't that so neat? So the one that I picked out for her um, because they only had a few in the larger, um, oh, I always get it mixed up. Is it PM or GM? GM, so the GM size. So they really only had like just not very many options in the GM size. They had a lot of the PM size, but that is like teeny tiny. I don't know if any of you wear the PM size, but it's really, really tiny. Anyway, so I ended up getting her um, the thinner one of this, but with a gold finish. And in fact, I may have her choose like which one she likes more, but that one also has like a slightly different pattern on there. I wonder if I should just open this. I'm just gonna open this up. I can, I can tie this again. I can tie this again, she won't even notice. Okay, I just, I have to show you guys. It's like too hard to describe and I'm sitting here thinking, I probably won't be able to find a picture of this. So this one comes in a different pouch. That's interesting. I've only ever seen these for the jewelry. Um, so this one has like more of like the cotton canvas. And then, oh, this is so cute. I think she's gonna really like this. Here's that pink cat head. It's like peeking out, it's so funny. So anyway, I saw this and I was like, okay, I need to get this, this one for her. Uh, but I am gonna have her choose because I like them both. So she prefers the larger like silver toned one. She can have this one. So yeah. So anyway, they only had one of these. They only had one of these. Otherwise I would have just gotten like the same um, so that we could have the same bracelet, you know, like besties bracelets. Um, but that is, yeah, but they only have one of each. So anyway, that is my Hermes haul. All right, let me pack these up and I'm actually gonna get ready for bed. So we can do my evening skincare routine. Right, so I am in my jammies, even though I wear very comfortable clothing, there's always something so special about that moment when you put on your pajamas. I love it. So first things first, I'm going to remove my makeup and this is actually the product that brought me to Retrove. This is their uh, Luminous Cleansing Elixir. And I was like really getting into cleansing balms when I came across this. And it's described as like a, like a cleansing balm in a way. And when I saw the packaging, I thought it was gonna be a tub, but it's not. It actually has a pump at the top and it is like airless technology. So you will get every last drop of the product out of here, which is amazing. Um, so what I like to do is I take a little washcloth and I'll link to these because I get a whole bunch of these off of Amazon. And many of you have asked me like, what are the cloths that I use? Um, because I don't like standing here at my sink with the water running and me just like splashing water all over my face and getting it everywhere. So I always use uh, like a damp cloth to like wipe away cleansers and stuff. So I like to start by wetting my cloth here and then I wring out any extra. And I just, I like having it on standby. <laughs> so then I just put it on my vanity. And then I pump two pumps of the Luminous Cleansing Elixir. That is plenty. And then I just work it in. It is so silky smooth. It feels like, it feels a little bit creamier and richer than like a cleansing balm after you've broken it down. Um, it feels a little bit thicker than that because I feel like when a cleansing balm gets broken down, it's just pretty oily. But this just has just such a lovely, like rich kind of texture. So I just, you know, get in to remove like mascara, start to look really, really incredible and scary. And this is by far my favorite. You guys have heard me talk about this all the time and I've been using this product for years, 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 since, since before I moved to Vegas. Has it been that long? Maybe like five or six years? Anyway. Nothing beats this cleansing balm for a few reasons. One is even when I'm using it close to my eye, and it's not like I treat it like Johnson's baby shampoo or something. I keep my eyes closed when I'm kind of working out my um, eyeshadow or whatever, my mascara, but it never gives me that cloudy vision 
which I love because I really hate that cloudy vision. It really, really bugs me. So I'm just taking my cloth here and just wiping it all off. And the other thing that I really love about this cleansing elixir is that a lot of cleansing balms will leave a little bit of a kind of an oily, an oiliness. Um, it'll leave an oiliness behind. And I have dry skin and I never really thought I minded it until I used the Luminous Cleansing Elixir, but I just, I don't like it. I don't like, like I want my skin to feel clean after I've cleansed it. You know what I mean? Um, and so a lot of uh, cleansing balms, it just leaves that kind of like film over my skin and I just don't like it. I'm like, do I have to like wash my face again? That's what I'm always thinking. I'm like, do I need to, <laughs> like, what do I need to do to remove this uh, feeling? And the Luminous Cleansing Elixir, there's no such residue or anything. Like, like my skin feels incredibly clean, but it's not dry. It feels nice and soft and supple, but I don't have that weird like cleansing balm film <laughs> that I have on my face. So you can see how effective it is. Everything is gone. Nothing is left at all. It is the most effective like facial cleanser I've ever used that leaves my skin feeling really, really nourished, but not like overly oily. The best, the absolute best. And then if my skin is still like a little bit damp, I just go straight in with the um, intensive replenishing facial moisturizer. And this is the stuff I was telling you when I was doing my uh, morning skincare routine that is, this is like serious, serious, serious moisturization, hydration for your skin. So this has, much like the eye concentrate, this has like a goopy kind of texture to it. Do you see? Do you see how thick it is? It's like slowly running down my fingers. So this has, yeah, it's just kind of goopy and a little gooey, but I just work it into my skin, much like the cream that I used yesterday morning. And I kind of avoid my eye area just because I'm gonna use the eye concentrate on there. And despite this feeling almost a little like thick when you first put it on, I never ever have like a clogged pore situation. It just starts to absorb into the skin really quickly and it just feels great. And there's no added fragrance or anything. And it just makes my skin feel nourished, moisturized, protected. It's so, so good. So that is the Intensive Replenishing Facial Moisturizer. And again, I know like the names of the retrograde products are a little bit tricky because the moisturizer I think is the most moisturizing. Um, but if I were to look at the line just by the names, I would think the cream was. And the cream is very moisturizing, but this is, I think, like the most intense <laughs> out of the moisturizer cream in the serum. So anyway, again, on their website, they have like a console button. I would definitely click there just to kind of like talk it through because it's different. It's different. Their skin and the care line is definitely different. Um, and then I'm gonna go in with the eye concentrate again. So this is something I use day and night. And like I said, you need just the littlest bit. What is that, like a quarter inch? A quarter inch strip there. I just warm it up and then press and glide, <laughs> press and glide onto my eye area. And I pretty much just put it on like a mask. Like this is what I consider my whole eye area. So eyebrows down to my like under eye area and then all the way out to my hairline. And that is it. Although what I'm gonna do right now is take off my rings and use some of their um, hand cream because my hands have been really dry. I've been packing and shipping a lot of boxes, so they're really kind of hurting, but this hand cream has been so helpful. So I think I'm gonna end this vlog here. A big thank you to Retrove for working with me on this vlog. A big thank you to you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.